Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Nwaru Wes. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. And joining me every week is Mr. Pedro. What's going on? Red and Pedro's Crave Tech here at Adafruit. And every week we come to share 3D printing projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This year we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. How's everybody doing today? Hope everybody's doing well. Today we have some very special stuff. We are doing the Pi Portal stuff. There it is. See that 800 by 440? <laughs> How ridiculous is that? Hey, what's up, buddy? We want to start off the show with a special coupon code. Today's coupon code is Pocket Portal. Very cool. So if you want to get anything in the Adafruit shop, you can get 10% off your order using the coupon code Pocket Portal. There are some awesome freebies going around. If you head over to the website, there's actually new stuff that we just added. I think it's from since last week, but adafruit.com slash F-R-E-E -E is the place you want to be to find out all the free deals that are going on. We got pins, some lovely enamel pins that you get for orders that are 149 or more. You get a Perma Proto for 99 or more. For 200, you get US UPS ground shipping for US Continental. And you also get the, the pins the Perma Proto. If you spend $2.99, you get all that, plus a Circuit Playground Express. Awesome stuff there. So check out adafruit.com slash free for those deals. Same day delivery is still happening. It's a uh, option for the fine folks in the New York City, Manhattan area. So check out the website if your zip code applies for same day deliveries. Circuit Python meetings happen every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time spearheaded by Lady Catney and Scott Shockroft, who are leads, also Dan, is leads, uh, CircuitPython leads. There is a meeting every Monday at 2 p.m., as I said, and you can join in on that meeting by heading over to the Discord channel. That's where we're hanging out right now, Discord channel. Hey, there's AT Makers Bill saying, what's up? Good morning to you, sir. Yeah, and then we're gonna post about that too. So if you want to chat with us after the show, you can uh, check out the Discord server and you can um, get project help you can share your projects with the world and see what everybody's working on in the community live help. chat lives there for yeah. eternity so definitely check back there to see all the show really notes nice. people posting a lot of cool links and of course discussion that goes on throughout that's, the show that's right help wanted if you go to jobs.adafruit.com you can see the jobs board that we have going on there it's a free service for uh, makers and companies that are looking for makers. So if you don't have a profile yet and you're thinking about uh, getting some extra cash for maker projects, check out the jobs board from Adafruit, jobs.adafruit.com. When it comes to newsletters, we got a nice daily dose of newsletters. Check out the adafruitdaily.com website. You can opt into all sorts of different categories such as MicroPython, biohacking, and 3D printing, lots more. For product-focused stuff, we do this one every week, once a week. It's called the new, new, new newsletter, adafruit.com slash newsletter. You can opt into that one as well. Do, 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 do this week's project. This week, we're just talking about the Pi Portal. It is a Pi Portal day as it was released yesterday. So a couple folks saw it and grabbed it as fast as they could. Pi Portal is an awesome Internet of Things based platform that uses the ESP32 Wi-Fi module and it uses the M4 um, microcontroller, the Cortex M4, that's the CMD2151, sorry. Um, there is a lot of work being done on this. This is a circuit Python powered display. So you can display awesome things like uh, custom user interfaces. It's a resistive touchscreen. It's a 3.2 inch uh, in terms of size and there's lots of awesome libraries that are, that are available for it so that you can do, like I say, custom interfaces, sounds, uh, audio. Um, you can uh, do slideshows. You can display bitmap fonts. Lots of fun, interesting things. The, uh, the ESP32 is a great coprocessor that can do lots of internet things while it's doing all the internet things. The M4 could be used to do other things, so that's why we has Two processors, really. Let's take a look at the Learn Guide. Shout out to Lady Catney, who put this together. Uh, this is where you want to go to find out 
all the details about the Pi portal. So the overview page just kind of talks about those modules that it has on board. There's some nice photos of it. It is completely open source, running CircuitPython or Arduino. It's your choice, but we definitely prefer uh, CircuitPython as it makes things easier. Um, it's got eight megabytes of, of QSpy flash on board, so that can store all your image assets, audio, and anything you want, really. Heading over to the pinouts, this is gonna show you exactly uh, what all the pins are. Here is where the things are. The microcontroller and this, the eight megabytes uh, QSpy flash is right there. The Wi-Fi module, the ESP32 is over here. Um, you can talk to it uh, using these pins, these pinouts here. Um, as we go down here, you'll see that uh, we, it's really nice and convenient to use CircuitPython because it's, well, you can read it in English instead of having to guess, oh, what's pin eight or what's pin five or what's pin seven? That's, it's, it's broken down to you in a nice sort of description format because uh, it's Python, it's awesome. Uh, if you want to communicate with the, uh, uh, the, the ESP32, um, for other things, you can you can uh, control you can control it via uh, serial commands using the UART, and the, uh, the RX and the TX connections. Uh, so all that detail is break, uh, broken out for you here. A little bit of uh, information on the spy connection, uh, the the uh, the gosh the display. Here's how to talk to um, the touchscreen. It's pretty nice and conveniently labeled. And here's all the pins for the Arduino IDE. Same thing um, for controlling multiple uh, controls. Multiple pins are all laid out there. You can control the backlight. So if you want to do some, uh, so you want to PWM the, the backlight, here's how to do that. It's using six LEDs in parallel, which is really nice. And uh, there are onboard sensors. So a uh, shout out to Analog Devices, who sponsored uh, two, two different sensors here. We got a temperature sensor. Yeah, that's uh, connected via the I squared C. So you can talk to it by saying board.light. That's awesome. Uh, we also have um, an ambient light sensor. So we have temperature and light, both from analog devices. Details about it here. We have a micro SD card slot. So you can expand, um, you can store all sorts of fun things on the SD card, whether we do uh, photos or just data logging, you can store it all in your SD card. And we have a nice library for CircuitPython and Arduino. There you go. It has a speaker and a, the little Class D amplifier, so you can pump out some nice jams. It also has a built-in um, piezo speaker right there, uh, and a, a port for connecting a, uh, any type of speaker that's uh, 8 to 16 ohms. Uh, you can uh, connect to it through this little uh, Molex PicoBlade connector. It's like a JST connector, but smaller and more adorable. <laughs> you can talk to the audio uh, by saying board.audio underscore out. It's connected to the, the, uh, the, the DAC zero from the, uh, the SAMD51. You can talk to an Arduino um, using a zero because that's the pin. So there you go. Very, very cool. When it comes to expansion ports, the Pi Portal's got a, bun of, uh, a good amount of them. The I square C connectors in the middle there, it's got four connections. Uh, it's kind of the Stemma and the Groove compatible type of cable. Um, it's, it uses uh, I squared C, so it's a 3.3 volts uh, power and logic. Um, when it comes to digital and analog connectors, we got two of them for you on right next to the I squared C port. You can uh, either talk to NeoPixels or buttons uh, or, or other things like that. Um, they're uh, uh, D3 and D4 um, as they're labeled there for you. You can also talk to them via Arduino. There's an onboard and NeoPixel for a status. Um, kind of gives you an idea of what the code's doing, if it's downloading data or whatnot. You also have uh, a regular uh, 0803. Is it 08, 06? Something like that. One of those smaller chip LEDs uh, on the bottom there that's right underneath the, uh, the micro USB port. So there you go, you got two LEDs to play with for status. USB connector, you can uh, provide power to it um, via USB hub or wall adapter, and that's uh, how you program it through the micro USB port. Big reset button on the back, double click it to go into the uh, bootloader mode. If you want to change it up, switch between Arduino and CircuitPython if you'd like, you can totally do so. Next page is talk about CircuitPython, what it is, all the details there. 
uh, and then there's a dedicated PyPortal circuit Python setup. Library bundle includes all the things you need and a super intuitive breakdown of all the libraries and what they do. Again, huge, huge shout out to all the folks that are working on these libraries. It, it is a lot of tentacles, a lot of hands on this to make this happen. So, so many much. different things to be able to display text, to be able to render bitmap fonts, uh, to have little wrappers and helpers to make you to, to just put together a quick little slideshow project. All this is stuff that microservices being worked on as well for processing the images. There's a lot of tentacles, as you said. Yeah, man, it's, in this. it's pretty intense. Uh, if you go I'm ahead not, and subscribe like to pretty... the GitHub, you can see all the pushes that are being <laughs> made by the minute. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like how every uh, library here has a, a nice little description of what it does. Uh, so, for example, we're looking at um, you know displaced text. You can do that. Image loading, it's a helper to kind of, I guess, buffer images and play it back a little bit faster. Very, very cool. Of course, NeoPixels for controlling uh, external or the onboard NeoPixel. Mm -hmm. You got the SD card for reading and writing data. Man, it is amazing. So much cool stuff going on here. This is such an awesome product. <laughs> The first uh, page here, or the second page here, the Internet Connect is going to get you um, situated with what's a secret file, the way it operates. Um, so you, it needs to log into your Wi-Fi um, router. So this is how we set it up. We have a separate secrets uh, file that has uh, your that stores your 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 passwords and your tokens for any of the uh, the uh, the AP <laughs> the APIs. <laughs> Um, that you might be talking to. For example, here we have a GitHub token, Hackaday. Um, there's other services, like, of course, like all the social sites, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and other things like Weather, um, Weather, Open Weather, I think is one, and of course, Adafruit IO. So all those um, would be stored in this little secrets file. And the way we did this is so that um, when you're sharing your projects, you just have to, you don't have to worry about uh, accidentally embedding some tokens into your code because it's separate file. So how smart is that? So this is going to set you up with uh, um, connecting to Wi-Fi to your router and just kind of establishing a connection and pinging some sites here and there uh, to make sure that your ESP is connected and working and fetching JSON from the internet. So there you go. There's a nice little uh, kind of uh, your hollow world for Wi-Fi using the ESP32 on board the Pi Portal. Here's how to talk to it, uh, I guess, with Putty. Some nice examples there, um, and some more stuff. Uh, getting some requests, and it goes on as 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 you need to. Wi-Fi manager. Here's how to use the uh, the Wi-Fi manager um, if you'd like to use that. A nice dedicated page for updating the firmware on the ASP32. You might not need to, but if you ever do need to, you can totally do so, and here's how to do it. Downloads page has a nice assortment of the schematic. PCB files from EagleCAD are on the GitHub. Um, and Anything we nice need to add there are the stands. Yep. We're getting some requests for people who yes. are waiting for theirs to arrive, so they are going to need yes. After the show, I'm going to get some nice photos and take um, get, get that up there on the GitHub, Thingiverse, and all the repo sites, but for now, um, Know that uh, it is it's 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 ready to to, to get publish. up there <laughs> to publish yeah and um, here's a nice uh, screenshot of the uh, kind of the dimensions for the mounting poles and things so there you go and of course we have an uh, an actual 3D file that we will be releasing if not already on the uh, the GitHub pages so uh, we'll have those linked and stuff um, we are really rushing through <laughs> to get all these files out there and to get everything updated. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, got lots of fun Pi Portal projects that have been being worked on. My goodness. People are asking <laughs> too, is it purple or black? We're going to show it over the overhead in a little bit, but yes, it does yeah. come in black. Comes in purple black. was the prototype. Yeah, so uh, I guess open this one up. <laughs> Live unboxing. Live unwrapping. unwrapping. So this is what it comes, comes in a nice pink bag, bubble wrapped nice and tight. Um, the, uh, the protective film for the, the screen is still on there. Um, gonna... And hopefully uh, soon it will ship with CircuitPython. It does have CircuitPython on there, but we are working to get all the latest libraries and things ironed out so that we can ship it with running code. Thing is so small. Yeah, it's very tiny. Very so cool. So beautiful. Yeah. So, um, to plug it in, you can Here's some of the demo code um, that uh, that we already have on GitHub. So this is the YouTube 
um, stats um, kind of display. It plays back an audio uh, sound effect every time the numbers get updated. And this is a little 3D printed uh, stand that we will be releasing after the show. Uh, it uses the, 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 the M25 standoffs to kind of elevate it there um, and these little nylon fasteners to keep it all nice and secure. On the side here, you have access to the USB port. You have a nice hole here in the back for the reset button, or you could just kind of get it from here. And then you have an option to what, how, how tall do you want your standoffs to be. It's really nice. Um, so for, for this code, uh, I created a nice bitmap image of the background. So that's our little YouTube logo, got some traces on there. And then you can go out of town with how much interface stuff you want to do. The only live text is, is really these numbers here. This is using a bitmap font. Um, you can create and generate your own fonts um, using Font Forge. We have a learn guide on how to do that. This is a protective film. I can take it off if I want, but I'll leave it on there for now. And you can see that it, uh, the code is actually uh, uh, pinging uh, the, uh, the uh, YouTube's JSON uh, for, uh, I think, every minute to see, to update this number here. So we got the subs count and the views count. And um, whatever uh, data you want to display is up to you. Uh, as, as long as it's being able to, as long as it's in a JSON format, uh, you can display it. Very cool. So that is our YouTube counter. We have countless other, <laughs> we, ha we have a lot of other similar types of um, demo code, uh, mm -hmm. but for other things like, uh, I believe there's one for GitHub, there's one for uh, Hackaday, there's one for, I think it just went up, it's for, why don't we look at the learn guide so we can see it. Head on over to the, uh, the GitHub repo and you search for PyPort, you can see that these are all, wow. all, it's almost the full page. We have an air quality sensor, so it uses the AQI data feed from the US government, which is nice. And, and an Adafruit IO logger for displaying uh, text uh, from your feeds. A really cool uh, one that Brent just released as a guide is using the temperature sensors that are built right in so you can get readings of what the temperature and uh, I think the light levels yeah. are, I believe. Yep. Um, here's one called Astronauts. It, uh, it, search, it pulls from a JSON feed to see how many astronauts are in, in the ISS right now. Here's a Bitcoin one. I guess it shows you the price of mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Uh, Discord, I guess, shows you the uh, how many users are active in Discord, perhaps. An event countdown, which um, can be any event, birthdays, uh, it's a yearly event. Uh, event count up, backwards math, okay, that's what it says. Uh, GitHub stars, Hackaday skulls, Hackster projects, I guess it, it takes a, a Hackster stream, it'll stream um, uh, the newest uh, project thumbnails, I mm -hmm. guess, from the, the, the feed, which is a really cool thing. Mm -hmm. NASA, I think it's just a couple of images that uh, cycle through uh, a JSON feed of NASA images. That's cool. New products, all the new products, we made our own API for displaying new products. Um, so nice and formatted images that will display properly on the display. Open weather, this is going to be a really big one. Oh, yeah. This one's going to pull uh, data from, from, uh, from, I guess, the Open Weather API and display little icons, weather uh, forecasts, that sort of stuff. I think for now it just shows like an icon, but uh, obviously we're adding to it. Pi, uh, Pi Portal Quotes is another demo that shows uh, different quotes uh, that are uh, at the bottom of the Adafruit website. We have and on your invoices. Yeah, and in your invoices. Reddit shows you like how many uh, ups, I guess, a, a given subreddit has. Thingiverse shows uh, random Thingiverse things from a given profile. Twitter followers, weekly countdown, YouTube. I wonder what cute fuzz is. I don't know what that is. It could be mm. just cat photos. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. A nice stream of cat photos. All these are going to be, um, I don't know if they're going to ship with it, but they are available to download. and. Uh, We'll add these uh, to like the master guide. They'll show you how to work with them, how to customize them, to get you up and running in minutes. So that is kind of the point here. So again, coupon code is Pocket Portal. Why is it Pocket Portal? Because uh, we're working on some portable stuff. Do you have any questions? Yes. Where okay. are the stands in the enclosure? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> they're like. 
Somebody Seeing just, on my hard drive and I gotta do this Yeah, show. somebody just tweeted too, they want, they want to start designing an enclosure, but we already have one designed. Yeah, that's true. Well, well we, want, we need more. This is a very specific one. So, yeah, what are you prototyping? Uh, we put together a nice um, case for the Pi Portal, uh, a battery pack, and the Power Boost 1000C. In the back there, you see we have a nice button for reset. We have a spot for the speaker as well on the back there. And then um, let's go ahead and turn it on. So we got this really nice honkin' toggle switch to turn it on. Um, it's pretty fast to turn on and power on. It'll connect to ES uh, the ESP32, It'll connect to my Wi-Fi, and there it is. This is the event countdown, the yearly event demo code. I created my own graphic here of my, my nephew. That's me right there. And then this is uh, sort of a countdown to our Disney trip. We're going to Disney 22 days, <laughs> two hours and 39 minutes. Last week it was what, like 30 something days? So it's, it's working. On the bottom here, we got a nice spot for a tripod screw. That's the quarter 20. Always gonna wanna have those. Um, and uh, it's got some interesting little features here. It's all snap fit, so it's like a three piece design. You can snap fit the back or the front, and then you print out this frame separately. There is a giant opening here for the power boost. If you want to recharge your LiPo battery, you do that right there. Again, there's the speaker hole, so you can uh, pump out some nice jams there. On the side, we have access to the micro USB port on board the Pi Portal. That's where you're gonna, you can either supply power to the Pi Portal or you can program via that little thing there. This little, uh, this little hole here is for the micro SD cards. You just get your finger in there and look at that, it comes out. It's got a nice spring um, as well. So you can just take out your SD card, put it back in if you'd like. Gives it a nice click, so it's in there. And it's got a nice, nice indentation so that it accommodates for uh, bigger um, connectors. So there you go. This is uh, one, of the, one of the, it's nice, uh, it's not too thick. It's about the width of your thumb. So it feels really nice in your hand. And it's reminiscent to a lot of the Pi, Raspberry Pi projects like the mobile uh, touch Pi, but it's so much faster than having to, to load um, no Linux. OS. So no OS, it just boots up instantly, which is awesome. Um, yeah, so this is what we're working on. There is also, uh, you could also have some wires coming out of here. Maybe you want to do some NeoPixel control or something. You would want to do that over Wi-Fi, but if you do have some extra stuff, I guess you can use that, um, that opening here too. Um, let's take it, uh, let's take, it op take a look at the inside of it. It is a snap fit case, so uh, the snap fits are pretty um, snug, but you can get your fingers in there to kind of pry it open. Let's see if I can do this without harming it. It's too bad. I think I need to add some more chamfers to those to those snap fit nubbings because they uh, they're really good, almost too good. I don't think I can get it open. <laughs> Here's some. Uh, is, can I get a spudger? That. Spudger is a little tool to this little metal tool here that we actually sell in the shop. To, it has a nice uh, wedge here so you can pry this type of thing open. You just get it in there. There we go. Once you get that initial click, everything else just kind of opens up. So if you take a look on the inside, you can see we got um, this nice frame here. This is a little custom bracket that we designed so that we can have more mounting points for other boards like the, like the power boost here. So it keeps it nice and flush couple fasteners there to, on the mounting holes to keep it nice and tight. Uh, and then there's plenty of room in here for a bigger battery, maybe another breakout. I don't know, what do you guys think? So that's what we got right now. Um, I had some ideas, maybe we could do a print in place hinge so that, that we can have a door that opens up to, repo to replace the battery. Um, this is a little actuator thing for uh, hitting that reset button. Also had some ideas to, uh, to use some light pipe filament uh, to kind of stick to this new pixel, maybe we can have some status LEDs up here on the top. That's a lot of work, but um, maybe we'll get to it. But for now, it's a great way to get a portable, pocketable uh, Pi portal. Snap fits like that. Get that in there. And you can do the reset there if you'd like. Let's turn it on. It still powers on. How awesome is that? Here we go. Awesome work on the... Uh, Unloading the bitmaps, they load much faster now oh, yeah. than before. So, I mean, every single day there's new uh, improvements being made to it. So, again, shout out to the CircuitPython crew. 
for, for going all out and making this an amazing product and platform. So there we go. That's, uh, that's the case. Still working on it, forthcoming. The stand, we'll release this um, right after the show. We'll get that up there on the GitHubs. Mm -hmm. we'll do a pull request, get that out there. Um, it's very reminiscent to the two weeks ago project, the Raspberry Pi Zero stand. Basically the same type of design, just you know, scaled up for the Pi portal. Yeah. All right, let's head down over to the chats. Got stuff Kirby saying that we should have a slowdown counter. So you can like slow it down. One note I'm going to give mm. too is about the right angled USB connection that we have on this guide here. It's yes. a little bit more shorter. We are going to be stocking, just like the HDMI connectors that we had, these USB right and left angle PCB connectors for these. So if you want to make your uh, projects a little bit more slimmer, a little bit more portable, we'll have these along with the ribbon, ribbon cables, which are compatible with our HDMI, our yeah. DIY HDMI connectors that we, ca that we stock. We have um, several different sizes of, this, of these, so you can change how long you want these to be, from the smallest little 10 centimeter long one to, I think, uh, what is it, around 100 or 200 centimeters. Yeah. And you can find these cheaply on Amazon. That's right. But we will be stocking these as well. Yeah, if you type in DIY, um, inside of the search bar for the product page, you can see all the different Close. cables and DIY connectors that we have. It'll be nice because we already have these ribbon cables. Mm -hmm. We'll have to change the product name, but we'll just call them ribbon cable. And uh, here's the HDMI ones. We have mini, micro, all sorts of different ones for HDMI. Um, now we're going to have micro USB ones because it makes sense. Yeah, they're super handy for slimming down projects. Usually uh, USB cables in particular are super chunky. You yeah. don't need to be, so nice to have. And for different project orientations too, That's you can right. have it facing uh, to the front, which is gonna be very handy for another project we're prototyping for I hope next week is our remake of the Viewfinder. I'm gonna call it Pi Portal View Master. View Master. So it's basically gonna be one of these inside here. So you can have <laughs> uh, basically a digital uh, view master. Yeah. Uh, replicate the way that the crank works. Here's my little prototype for that. So it'll, um, you know, just yeah, crank down like that. Yeah, spring. It'll touch or make contact with the button to allow the advancement of a slideshow. So it should yeah. be fun. So a nice little way to replicate that. We're working on that. Very cool. Multi next week. part design here. Mm -hmm. Very neat. Nice, nice simple digital viewfinder. Useful for like uh, museum tours or oh, hey we'll maybe out, yeah. you can turn this into if you add the quarter 20 in the bottom here maybe a There's virtual game boy or something like that with the <laughs> tripod stand like that go. nice little gaming platform or if you want to have uh, you know, uh like images that are hidden or whatever yeah nice way to do be that be cool to, for escape rooms or something escape rooms yeah be perfect for that sweet Again, we will be posting the case and the stands for this as, long, uh, as well as the actual CAD files. I think that's already posted up for I believe so. anybody that wants to design a different case for this. So you can very easily plop that into your CAD program and design around that. Yeah, whether it's uh, Tinkercad or Fusion or SolidWorks, it should all work with it. We'll have different formats for you folks as well. Mm -hmm. As well as a, I want to get a vector file out there for folks that want to laser cut. So they can just have a nice, uh, you know, template for the mounting holes. PowerBoost 1000C was last week's project that we uh, shared as we had a nice guide on how to use the PowerBoost 1000C with the Pi Portal. Um, so we got a nice CAD file of that that's already up there. And then this week's over Sunday, I published a layer by layer tutorial on this thing, which is like, what is that? It's, a, it's, the, it's the mounting bracket for the Pi Portal. It allows uh, more mounting points uh, to attach more boards and things to uh, that bracket. Um, so there you go. I show you guys how I designed it. It's a nice kind of five to six minute tutorial on how to use um, the surface tools to create a, uh, a parametric and easily adjustable kind of maze shape. So I kind of create this like weird maze um, using the line tool and then um, using the thicken tool to, uh, to extrude 
uh, a line as opposed to try, trying to draw out this profile here with lots of intersections and things. So I thought it was a neat technique. And um, you can check out all the Layer by Layer tutorials. We've got a playlist. It's linked in the description of this video and that video. Uh, so check it out. There you go. I'll continue to do those as, uh, as I learn new things. It's the best way to teach is when you learn something, teach it. Here we go. Definitely keep an eye out on the GitHub page too for when the uh, CAD files for all these are posted as well. Yeah. Give it a star so you can get notified. We'll yeah, please give it a star. Excellent, excellent. Well, it's 11.30. I think we're almost through with the show. Still got a lot of stuff to do. And uh, later tonight, you're gonna hear way more about the Pi Portal. Oh yeah. So tonight, we're gonna do a show and tell. We'll uh, show off some of the things here. Hopefully we get to see some of you folks. So please come and join us, share what you're working on. I'd love to have you guys on the show at 7.30 p.m. tonight, Eastern Time. Later after that is Ask an Engineer with Lamar and Phil at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, same channels. Ask an engineer. Um, there's be, there'll be another coupon code um, for that time slot as well. John Park's workshop is tomorrow at 4 p.m. Come and join John Park for some more awesome Pi Portal related things. He is working on it and has some awesome stuff to share with you guys. Is that uh, Amazon? <laughs> So don't forget, Pipe Portal is the coupon code for today. Did I say Pipe Portal? I meant Pocket Portal. <laughs> yeah. so I'm going through the comments here. Yeah, if in, any support and stuff, you can always uh, email support at adafruit.com. Um, that's the best place to get it. The, fo the support team is really, really fast at answering, so be sure you, uh, you, you hit them up. People asking what type of filament this is. Vertical black from Filamentum. I People love this seem filament. to dig the sparkly. Yeah, definitely so adds some character to it. Oh, and on the side, it's yeah. the vertical gray. So you can see the differences between the two. Yes. Yeah, it's lovely filament, premium filament that uh, you'll definitely notice a difference. If you're buying the cheaper stuff, I notice a big difference in the quality mm -hmm. that uh, we're able to get. Definitely the filament you want to use for when you're finished prototyping. You want to move on to the beauty shots yes. of it. Once your geometry is all figured out. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Let's go into Community Makes. I almost this forgot. This week's Time Lapse Tuesday, super handy. You found this. I thought you actually designed it. It was nope. so mm -hmm. useful. It is a glasses stand. Yeah, it's a stand for your glasses. I had a couple of, of glasses Since we're and I'm tired on of them a, sitting on my table. We're on a roll with all these stands. Oh, that's right. Figure to have one for your glasses. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So those are my Snapchat spectacles, the Nico frames. Mm -hmm. uh, but this will work with any um, pair of glasses. It also comes in two different styles. Uh, there is a double holder yeah. for this, so it has like two of these little guys. Heading on Take a over. look at over the Thingiverse page. This was designed by look at, yeah Paul's look at room notes. is the username. So Paul, um, and uh, Paul here is Bataran. Paul Bataran, thank you. So there's the single version, and here's the double version. So you have two pairs, and you want to switch between them. You get you can do that. Um, there you go. Very very simple. Prints without any supports. You might have to orient it um, in your slicer, which is what I had to do, but. Hey, you had to chop off about a little 0. bit, eight yeah. millimeters of the bottom here, just so that the little stand there is nice and flush. Yeah, here you can look at the overhead and show you where the flat side is. There you go. That's right the flat side. I really like the holes here since it does give access for the charging cable. <laughs> yeah, it does. You got a charger, sunglasses? Uh -huh. Well, when it has a video camera, yes. Mm -hmm. So super handy uh, little glasses stand here. Cool. Keeping on the theme with all the stands we got going on. Stand up. There we go. Outstanding. Got some more community makes in the list. Yeah, let me pull them up. So here are some weekly makes from awesome folks in the community. First one up is from Jay Dosher. 
who created a really nice remix of this guy here, the uh, the Pi Zero stand. It has a spot nice. for an antenna. That looks looking really nice and purple cool. and black there. Very, very cool. So if you got yourself a <laughs> Pi Zero project and you want to uh, print something to keep up, to keep your stuff propped up, it's a great thing to do. So awesome. Thank you, Jay, for sharing that on Twitter. We got another one here. Speaking of cameras and accessories, Liz Clark from D uh, Blitz City DIY YouTube channel and social media channels uh, uh, remixed the Hero 5 GoPro flexible case so that it has these two knuckles here for the bottom uh, so that you can use it with uh, uh, any uh, GoPro accessory. I, I believe she's using it for capturing time lapses on her Prusa 3D printer, which is awesome. Glad that works out well. I think she printed it in flexible stuff from Sane Smart, I believe. Or no, NinjaFlex. Excellent. Yeah. That's Using the, uh, the stock settings from Prusa in uh, Slicer or Slick 3R. Very mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, it does a really good, good job of doing the NinjaFlex filaments for this. And excellent choice of filament there. Yeah. To make it nice and rugged if you want to take it outdoors or something. It'll withstand. Sweet. Well, there you go. Thank you, Liz, for sharing that. And you can subscribe to Liz for awesome content and projects on the YouTube and beyond. Let's see, I have one last one, I believe. <laughs> this is the Snap Fit box from Bill. If I can get my mouse to work. This thing is so awesome. Yeah, this is a really nice uh, can animation of the assembly as well. So you can see here how it fits the NRF 52 Blue Fruit. Um, Sacred Python Bluetooth board, uh, the pressure sensor, and uh, the little adapters and things uh, for the tubing. So excellent. A lot of folks seem to dig it. Um, it is on Thingiverse, and I will post it up on the blog uh, later for 3D Thursday on Thursday tomorrow. Very cool. Awesome work, Bill. Really like how you're using animation to showcase the assembly. It, it gets really quirky, the animation workspace. Um, and so I applaud anyone who is daring enough to use the animation tools in Fusion. <laughs> it's pretty confusing. <laughs> it's, it's not confusing, it's just buggy. It crashes. But hey, that's what you pay for. I paid nothing. <laughs> so it's great. Very, very awesome. Shout out to Bill. Check out more awesome AT projects, assistive tech type projects, um, by uh, following him on the socials. AT underscore makers on YouTube as well. And Facebook group is another one where you can see all the awesome things people are making in the AT community. I think that's going to do it for the show, right? Yeah. I believe that's it. Yeah, it's going to be Let's it. Do and everything. Yeah. You got all the show notes in the video as it's posted, and yeah. So you'll you'll by the time you're watching this, if it's on the on the replay, all, all the stuff will be released. Yeah. All the CAD files. Super cool. Man, we got lots Double to do. Double checking. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right, that's gonna be it. Yeah. Don't forget go coupon off. code. Pi portal. Pocket. See, I didn't call it Pi portal because I'm sure Phil's gonna make it Pi portal. And then if we have two the same, it might, <laughs> it might break the internet. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. We will see you later tonight for Ask an Engineer and Show and Tell. But until then, don't forget. Make a great day. To make a great day. Bye, folks. See you.